Hello, and welcome to Composer Toolbox, the show that looks at the common techniques utilized by the master composers and how you can practically apply them. In this episode, I wanted to take a brief detour away from the Star Wars scores and look at a score very near and dear to my heart, Danny Elfman's score for the 1989 film Batman. Much like I did with episode 1 of this series, this will be mostly be an introduction to the score and its composer. A copy of some of the music, some of the original music, um, and you can see I have my timing notes on the top. So, a bit about Elfman at the time. When Elfman was brought on to score Batman, he had really only done mostly comedies till that point, mainly due to his success from the film Pee-wee's Big Adventure. But on top of this, Elfman had never been formally taught. He had spent many of his years as the lead singer of the Los Angeles-based rock group Oingo Boingo. Elfman was seemingly extremely unqualified to write the big orchestral music that Burton wanted. In the words of Robert Dorschuk, Elfman is an untutored wunderkind who's more at home with performer than Walter Piston. That's from the 1989 edition of Keyboard Magazine. Due to this, producer John Peters was initially unsure about hiring Elfman. Nevertheless, he took the job and called up his friend, Steve Bartek, to orchestrate. During the production of the film, Elfman would visit the set where he could get a feel for the visuals and the tone of the film. He often tells the story about how he came up with the main theme while he was on a plane on the way home to Los Angeles. My craziest story of how that happened was on Batman because it hit me on a 747 coming home from the Gotham City set, and I heard the beginning of the score. And at that moment, it was just nothing but me and a Sony tape recorder. I had no keyboard, I had no access to anything. I couldn't make voice notes next to the guy sitting next to me. It just had that kind of vibe. So I kept running into the bathroom. And every time I got into the bathroom, I would. I would stay there about five minutes and I would do some notes and try to open the door and I'd come out and there's a flight attendant. Sir, are you okay? I'm fine. I'm fine! And I did this like four or five times. This is the first step of Elfman's process, finding and experimenting with the themes for the film. He'll put it up against different parts of the movie, usually the beginning, middle, and end, and see if it works. After many tests to see if he can mutate and morph it and still be recognizable, He'll bring it to the director to see if he likes the material. In the case of Batman, Burton really didn't need any convincing, rather it was the producer, John Peters, that still had some qualms about Elfman taking the job. As Danny Elfman recalls, I had written all this dark music, and John Peters was saying, look, this is fine, but you know we're talking about a hero here. I played him all these pieces but at this point it was essential that I came up with this heroic theme. I just took the same basic theme and turned it into this march, and did it a certain way, changed the key around a little bit, and all of a sudden, Peters leapt up out of his chair and it was completely obvious that I had found the Batman hero theme. Now, there exists several early work tapes of Elfman's ideas, most likely coming from the Macintosh-based program Performer on the special edition soundtracks that can give you some insight to what Elfman was working with. Most of these can also be found on YouTube. Once the director, and specifically the producer in this case, liked the ideas, Elfman went through and scored the film chronologically from beginning to end. On the scoring process, Elfman said, I don't plan or think about where the music is going to go. I tend to let the music carry itself, and I often become surprised by it. I never question it. He says that unless he's thoroughly prepared before the scoring process, the music won't sound cohesive once he lets it carry itself. After finishing a cue, Elfman would hand it off to Steve Bartek for him to orchestrate. At the time of a 1995 interview in Film Score Monthly, Bartek said that 50% of the scores he received from Elfman were handwritten, the other 50% were printed out from a computer sequencer. However, in 1989, most of it probably would have been handwritten, 
all of it in treble clef. Bass clef wasn't really his forte. Sometime after this, after months of scoring and working day in and day out, the score was recorded by the Symphonia of London Orchestra with Shirley Walker conducting. Now after the film's release, and with Elfman brought to the spotlight, there was a bit of controversy surrounding him and the score. Many theories suggested that he didn't write his own music, that there were countless ghost writers, or that he completely relied on Bartek or Walker to produce the music. This all came to a point in several editions of Keyboard Magazine being published with letters between Elfman and composer Micah Rubinstein. In the January 1990 edition of the magazine, Rubinstein said that by glorifying Elfman, musical ignorance was being glorified. Elfman shot back in the March 1990 edition with a letter emphasizing the importance of learning by doing and defending his own way that he learned, as well as delving into some rather unprofessional and choice words. However, the 1995 Film Score Monthly interview with Steve Bartek dealt specifically with this topic. Bartek firmly asserted that he never added anything to Elfman's scores. Everything that was in the soundtrack, Elfman wrote every single bit of it. He, Bartek, simply acted as the orchestrator. And thus, this is the abbreviated story of the score for the 1989 Batman. Being the first score to ever make me interested in composing back in the third grade, it will always hold a special place in my heart. Anyways, I've linked some of the accessible interview archives, early Elfman work tapes, and my sources in the description below. If you like what I do and you want to help me get an education in exchange for some nifty benefits, then please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit goes a long way. Thank you for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for the next episode detailing the intricate use of themes in the 1989 Batman film, and I'll see you later. Goodbye. <laughs>